Hey guys, what's up? John here from FlyAteMikeAlpha.com and today we're going to go ahead and take a really close look at a very stiff crosswind landing in a Piper Warrior. So we made a couple low approaches in a full stop landing in 17 knots of wind gusting to 25, 90 degrees right across the runway. We're going to show you exactly what you can expect with your flight controls and with the airplane when you're landing in one of these really strong crosswinds. We put cameras all over the airplane to give you a full 360 degree picture of what's going on. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we've got a nice crab here, flying heading of about 250, accounting for all that wind. As we come up beam or touchdown point, we'll go ahead and configure our airplane. I like to use that PPFF acronym, so pitch and power. I'm pitching and trimming for my approach speed, slowing the airplane to 90 miles per hour initially. And then FF, laps and fuel pumps already on, since we're already in the pattern. We'll go ahead and start our nice descent right around 90 miles per hour, and keep the airplane coming down right about three to 500 feet per minute. Still maintaining that crab angle here, and sometimes increasing your crab angle as your airspeed and your ground speed slows. As you slow down, the air has more time to take effect on you and, and push you off course. So the slower you go, the more of a crab angle you need. We were flying a heading of about 245. Now to maintain our downwind track, we need a heading of about 250 or 255. Pretty good distance here to go ahead and turn our left base, but noting that our left base is going to be very short because of that wind. It's going to be a very strong tailwind for us here on left base, so I'm making sure I'm not pulling back. I'm letting the nose stay down, keep my air speed up. Rolling on over here to our left base, we'll go ahead and make that announcement. Venice traffic, wire 86 Echo, left base, runway 5, Venice traffic. And as we roll out of our left base here, we'll go ahead and go to flaps 25, second notch of flaps. Now, I would like to use full flaps here. I'm a little high, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to reduce power because I want to keep aileron authority. I want to keep my approach speed up. So I don't want to use full flaps and go slower. So we roll over here to final. Venice traffic, we're 786 Echo. Final, runway 5, Venice traffic. Venice traffic, that's on 184 number whiskey, clear of 31 Echo, Venice. I made much more than a 90 degree turn to get from base onto final because I have to crab up into the wind. Coming in here about a quarter mile final, that's when I want to start kicking my rudder. So I'm going to go ahead and push in right rudder put my left wing down and try to get on the pappies there. Try to get on glide path. And I can already see I got full rudder in. It's as far as it goes to the floor and I'm not really getting any more responsiveness from it. The biggest thing I don't want to do here is get slow because I've got full rudder deflection in and if I got slow here and were to stall with full rudder in and the ball way off to the left like that, that would not be a good day. That's a good recipe to put yourself into a low altitude spin. So as we look and down the runway the here, gonna we're going to keep there. our left yeah, wing down scenario. using our ailerons and whatever it takes to keep that left wing down and keep the airplane tracking down the center of the runway. Looking all the way down that runway, not letting our focus come towards the nose of the airplane, making our focal point down at the end of the runway. Yeah. And keeping that left wing down, making sure that if we do touch down, it's going to be left wheel first. I've already burnt up half my runway and we haven't actually got the airplane on the ground, so I'm going to go ahead and add full power slowly take out some of that right rudder, keeping in just enough to account for P-factor and left turning forces, climbing away from the ground, keeping the ball in the center. I have a positive rate of climb, climbing out in VX. Go ahead and start accelerating the airplane. And as we hit 200 feet at VX, I'll go ahead and go to flaps 10. Go to our first notch of flaps, let the airplane accelerate up to VY. There's our first notch of flaps, we're accelerating. We can feel that little bit of sink we get when we really reduce the flaps from 25 down to 10, and that's why we don't do it close to the ground or at low air speeds, because the airplane will just drop out from underneath us. Going to flap zero, accelerating the airplane to VY, and we're gonna go ahead, once we got good at positive rate, good air speed, I'll go ahead and make my left crosswind turn. Venice traffic, wire 86 Echo, left crosswind, runway five, Venice traffic. Gonna be in the pattern, runway five? Uh, we're in the pattern for five, but uh, wind is definitely favoring 3-1. Okay, one four about 11 mile final, 3-1. Hope to sneak in there. No problem, just keep us advised and we'll work around you, sir. Venice traffic, one 86 Echo, left downwind, runway five, Venice traffic. Again, here we're approaching our left downwind, reduced power, low in the nose, but it's not a 90 degree turn from crosswind to downwind, it's more of like a 70 degree turn because I'm crabbing quite a bit to account for that wind pushing me back towards the airport. So instead of rolling out on a 230 heading, the reciprocal of runway 5, I'll be rolling out more like a 250 heading. Now, if you guys find this video helpful, make sure you check out our online course at fly8mikealpha.com. Perfect crosswind landings, how to. All right, looking at a good spot here, being very aware that our base is going to be very short. Let's go ahead and turn that left base. 
Keeping our airspeed up, not getting slow here, letting the airplane keep coming down. Venice traffic, War 86 Echo, left base, runway 5, Venice traffic. And as we roll out on base here, I don't like to touch flaps when I'm in a turn, don't like the distraction. So as we roll out to wings level, we'll use an aileron rudder rolling out. Looking at the runway, looks like we're in a great spot here. I'll go ahead and go to flaps 2, flaps 25 in this airplane. And just using my power to control my altitude here. Looks like I'm actually a little higher than I want to be, so I'll reduce a little power and start rolling onto that uh, left turn onto final here so we don't overshoot our runway. Remember, it's going to be about a 100, 110 degree turn because we have to turn the airplane all the way back up into the wind. All right, here, dialed into our airspeed, looking great. We're just a smidge high. That's okay, I'll take it. I'd rather be just a hair high with a white and a pink rather than a white and a red. White and red's good, but white and pink's okay too. Just a little high, maybe about 3.2 degrees instead of 3 degrees on the glide slope. That way we'll clear these trees by a little bit more, especially with these gusty conditions. If I hit a whole bunch of sink in the last second, I have a little bit more room for error. About a quarter mile final here. Go ahead and start putting that right rudder on in. Can't even get the nose straight. Oh man, this would be a great time to just go around, but let's go ahead and continue this approach and see how it goes. Keeping that left wing down, moving these controls around, figuring out how much energy we got in the airplane. By pushing the air controls in and out, I can really feel how much energy I have left in my airplane without having to look at my airspeed indicator. And there's some mm, nice little currents coming yeah. over those trees there. Lots of mechanical turbulence from the trees off our left there. There's our touchdown zone, bringing the airplane down, reducing power, letting it keep coming down closer to the ground, closer to the ground. And trying to get that left wheel on. And there we are, left wheel first, all the way over on the controls. We can see how the wind's pushing us off, and that's okay. We'll go ahead and get the airplane back on the center line. Look down that runway, keeping your eyes focused all the way down. Flaps are coming up to really put the weight onto the wheels and using some brakes to get the airplane stopped, get all the lift off the wing. And there we are. Made a nice little landing there and right about, Ooh. I'd call that 25 knots or so, that windsock is straight out. So that's about the limit of the airplane and the limit that I want to try. try so there you have it guys, two different crosswind approaches to runway five with a nice stiff crosswind, winds 320 at 17, gusting to 25, really blowing the airplane all over the place, going to max full deflection on the rudder to where we couldn't even get the nose straight now. Obviously, when you put the rudder all the way to the floor and the nose won't go straight, it's a great time to just go around and go land somewhere else. But obviously, for training purposes, we want to show you what you can and can't do with the airplane, absolutely pushing it to its limits. We're going to go ahead and break down these two approaches really in depth in a separate video, go slow-mo, and really play it out play-by-play, -play, explain to you exactly what's going on with the flight controls, the airplane, the wind, all throughout the different phases of flight. But for now, there's just one thing I want to leave you guys with, and it's this. As you're coming down over the runway, and you're looking down that runway, ultimately what's going to hold your airplane over the center line of the runway is bank angle, not ailerons. So ailerons will control your bank angle, but the bank of the airplane is generating horizontal lift, which is fighting against that wind pushing you sideways. So you're in a side slip maneuver. You're in a side slipping state. As you side slip down that runway, keeping your bank angle relatively constant to fight that wind is going to be your best friend, doing whatever it takes with the ailerons to figure that out. Also, as you come down here on this second approach, we actually touch down. As we touch down left wheel first, we try to hold the bank in there. We go full deflection on the ailerons, but obviously we can't. We're holding the left wing down so it doesn't get picked up by the wind, but obviously when the wheels touch, the wings go level. When the wings go level, you lose your horizontal component of lift. Thus, the airplane is not fighting against that crosswind any longer. So the airplane starts to immediately drift to the side. Why? The wheels are on the ground. It should go straight, but the airplane only weighs 100 or 200 pounds initially when it touches down because there's still lift on the wings. That's why I retracted the flaps, trying to put weight onto the wheels, why I apply brakes, trying to slow the airplane, get rid of that lift and put more weight onto the wheels to give me more traction. But no matter what you do, when you're landing in a 20 knot plus crosswind in any airplane, the airplane is going to skid sideways somewhat because as soon as those wings go level with the wheels on the ground, you lose your horizontal component of lift. How do you account for this? Well, you need to be slightly upwind of center line or on center line. If you're already getting blown downwind, then that is a good time to go around and try again. You do not want to try to force the airplane onto the ground ever. I'm still working the airplane. I pulled power out long before the wheels touched and was working the controls, working all the energy out of the airplane before it touched. It's a good idea to maybe land with an extra knot or two or three in a crosswind so you have some extra 
airflow over your ailerons, rudder, stabilator, or elevator, but you're not trying to force the airplane onto the ground. If you're trying to land with an extra 10, 15, 20 knots, that is a really bad idea. Don't get the airplane into a situation and say, oh, now it's time to land and push it onto the ground. Continue to flare as you normally do and wait for the airplane to be ready to land. If you're having a hard time controlling it at those slow speeds, the winds are too strong. You need to go around and try to land somewhere else. If you do force the airplane on going 10, 15, 20 knots fast, this is exactly what's going to happen right here. It won't be a good day. Hopefully you guys found that video helpful. If you have any questions at all about crosswind landings or about this video, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Make sure you check out our crosswind landings course on Fly Mike Alpha. Dot com. It is a complete course to make you a better pilot at crosswind landings, whether you're a student pilot, private pilot, or commercial pilot looking to improve your crosswind landing skills. Check it out. I promise you it will help improve your, I promise you it will help improve your crosswind landings or I will give you your money back guaranteed. Be sure to check out all our other awesome, helpful online courses at flyatmikealpha.com, the free private pilot ground school, the instrument pilot ground school, commercial pilot ground school, and all the checkride prep courses on there. When you sign up for those courses, I guarantee you will pass your checkride or I will pay for it. And as always, guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly8mikealpha.com. We will see y'all next time.